here with the Real Life Stories, and today we're going to be talking to Frankie Perez. He's a friend of mine, a former train of, training partner from up north, and he's going to be a big star. You may not know of him now. Um, people up in New Jersey and the PA area definitely know about him, but within a year or so, you're definitely going to know his name. So, um, Frankie, I definitely appreciate you join, uh, joining me today. Um, I appreciate your time and uh, stopping by. So what we wanted to do, I wanted to first um, introduce yourself, uh, let us know who you are, and they want to go into your fight career a little bit, and then talk about some things that you're doing outside of the sports community too, okay? All right. Uh, well, Sorry. Uh, well, Perez, I'm a 7-0 pro fighter. Uh, Ricardo Almeida's Ricardo. And I just wanted to thank Rafael for this interview. You know, uh, all social media always helps, you know, grow in this sport. Um, but I'm a pro fighter full time. I have a, a clothing line and a DJ company um, outside of fighting that I work every single weekend, doing private parties and club events and selling our product, our fight gear, and uh, hosting our own amateur fights. And um, right now we're getting ready for our Northeast Combat Sports Expo. We're doing a three day expo um, at the New Jersey Convention Center. It's going to have uh, Muay Thai fights, grappling tournament, amateur MMA, plus tons and tons of vendors, a couple of seminars from some uh, special guests like UFC guys, and then um, we're also having a, a Tiger Shaman tournament on uh, the third day. So it's going to be like a full, full out uh, martial arts extravagant weekend that we're working on right now. Um, but that's all I, really what I do. I, I, I'm always in. Uh, I'm always working. Always working. Yes, yes, that's true. So let's start with your fight career first. Um, you're, you said you're seven and zero. When did you turn pro? I turned pro in '09. In '09, okay. So what kind of led to you getting involved with MMA? Like, how did that whole process start? Um, it's kind of a funny story. I uh, uh, I got into MMA with a mistake. You know, um. I went to some fights that my buddy couldn't go to uh, with my father. And uh, he was like, well, I can't go to the fights. Here's a ticket. Um, go check it out. It, it happened to be uh, one of my gym teachers in high school fighting. So we went and checked it out, man. And for the first and last fight, it was I loved it. You know, uh, I actually found a coach that night um, through a mutual friend and started training the next day. And everything's been history. Oh, okay. okay, good stuff, good stuff. So did you go straight into fighting, or were you doing, like, just um, kickboxing first, or how did that path start for you? No. So I know you do a lot of different things. So. Right, right. But uh, I do a lot of things now. I mean, growing up, I never uh, – I was a sports guy, man. I played baseball, football, and basketball each and every season, and I gave it my all, and I was good at it. You know, I, uh, before I found fighting, I was going to be a – I wanted to be a pro baseball player. Um, okay. But uh, I never did boxing. I always wanted to do boxing and wrestling. My parents never allowed me to do it. They didn't. They thought it was kind of like rugged, and they don't want me rolling around on the mats with boys in tights. And you know, it would always make fun of me about that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, on MMA, and um, actually, like the first two months, my dad honestly it would just like crack jokes on me. Oh, you're gonna go roll around with boys. You're gonna go roll around with boys. <laughs> just making fun of me, you know, and. Uh, what what yeah. changed his mind and my whole family's mind is when I, I did my first jiu-jitsu tournament in two months of training, and I took a second place, never doing anything like this ever before. And uh, from there, I guess they, they got into it, and they, they really uh, understood that I loved it, and I wanted to keep pursuing it. So that's how I got into MMA. Good stuff. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I know your dad um, – I, I know your whole family supports you a lot, but I know you work with your dad very closely too, right? Yeah, yeah, me and my dad uh, work on a daily basis. Um, he, he worries about, you know, getting the fight cards prepared and, like, uh, guys getting in their paperwork and stuff like that. Um, my mother also, she handles, like, a lot of the paperwork stuff, all the, you know, all the computer stuff and stuff like that. My dad does all the, the, the footwork, you know, talking to coaches and teams and stuff like that. And then I get all the production work handled as far as, you know, Go Fight Live and... Um, you know, mic setups and light setups and guys' mm -hmm. um, songs and all that production stuff where the cage is going to go and stuff like that. So, I mean, we have a pretty solid team that the whole family's into. You know what I'm saying? Good stuff. I, I remember you um, started out in Rahway in the 
um, sports arena that they had there. Are you still there or have you gone anywhere else? Um, we're waiting because when Sandy happened, they um, they got banged up pretty bad. Like their whole place got um, oh, okay. died. And um, uh, we're just waiting on them for the renovations to be done. And then once the renovations are finished, we'll be back at Rawway. Okay, okay. So where are you um, – so where are you holding fights right now? Like, are you somewhere else? Um, well, we're at Brookdale Community College right now. Um, okay. The okay. expo will be at uh, the New Jersey um, Convention Center in uh, Raritan, I believe. Okay. And I don't know if you said, but what are the dates for that? Uh, well, the, the combat sports is going to be the, thir the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, I actually have a flyer right here next to me because there's so much going on that, that weekend that I, I can't uh, remember off the top of my head. Um, okay. So yeah, it's going to be um, December 13th, 14th, and 15th. The 13th is going to okay. be, uh, you know, the expo with all the vendors and stuff like that. And then at night we're going to have Muay Thai fights from uh, Strike Zone. And then okay. Saturday we're going to have the grappling, the World Grappling Tournament all day um, with men, women, teens, and children divisions and a five-on-five -five team challenge. Um, and we're also going to have the vendors out there and people doing seminars and stuff. Um, and then we're going to have the Dead Serious 9 amateur MMA card uh, at night. Okay. okay. And then Sunday, Tiger Showman's coming in and doing their whole thing. It's just going to be Tiger Showman only. They're having a grappling tournament okay. and, and a whole kind of uh, kickboxing tournament and stuff like that. Okay, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. Explain um, the 5 on 5 team challenge to me. I actually saw that information a couple weeks back, and that was pretty interesting. Um, I I'm not in charge of any of the grappling thing, but, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just any team that pick your best five-on-five, five, you guys, uh, we're going to figure out weight classes. They're, they're figuring out weight classes for the five uh, different competitors. And it's just going to be your best five versus my best five. We're going to try to get maybe, like, ten teams um, and, and do, like, an all-day tournament with them. Oh, okay. That, that, that surely sounds cool. So looking back over your fight career, who are some of the – individuals that kind of help mold you, who played a big role in helping you get to where you are today? Um, honestly, I don't talk about them enough, but uh, I definitely um, would like to take the time out to thank uh, my actually my next door neighbors, um, John and Eric Hendricks. They, uh, before I, I went to those fights, man, they you used to bring me over to the house and we used to roll around in the basement. They used to teach me, you know, like the basic arm bar and stuff like that. And I, I never knew about any of that jujitsu stuff. So I, I, I only went over there just to roll around because I was just like wrestling with the guys and stuff like that. And uh, I definitely, if it wasn't for them, I probably, you know, would have never found jujitsu or even, I probably would have again started with it right now. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely like to thank them. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, the guys have been helping me forever, the, the guys that I'm with now. You know, um, even though I wasn't a Ricardo Almeida from the beginning, um, still, like, I've known Frankie since I was 17, Chris Liguori, um The fight, my first ever fights I went to, Dante Rivera was the main event, you know, and um, all these guys have been helping me from the beginning. I mean, besides my family, man, it's really, you know, my, my family has definitely been supporting me from the beginning till now, um, in each and every way possible, and um, I definitely look up, you know, to my dad um, for moral support, um, and, and just my teammates now, Ricardo's, man, Frankie, Chris Ligori, guys that have been with me forever, Steve Rivera, uh, Zeke Flores, um, there's so many, man, I just, I don't want to forget anybody. No, I definitely understand, I definitely understand why. You're um, definitely growing in the sport, uh, when I did the feature piece on you a couple months back, a lot of people had a good feedback about that. So the, there's definitely some eyes on you. So um, best of luck when it comes to that. So I also saw that your clothing line is going pretty well. You actually uh, worked with, what's his name, um, Brandon Jacobs. Like I saw the Instagram picture a few weeks back with him. How did that come about? Right. Uh, well, right. Uh, um, when we first started Dead Serious, uh, it was for my dad started it. Uh, I give I give all the credit to my dad. Uh, he obviously couldn't train anymore. He was older and stuff like that, but he always wanted to be involved, so he came up with the Dead Series fight gear. And at the beginning, I just I had school, I had work, and I had training. I wanted nothing to do with it, to be honest with you. I just wanted nothing to do with yeah. Dead Series and, and stuff like that. And then it slowly started growing. I started, you know, slowly started getting, you know, working my way in there. And uh, we came up with the Fight Gear Company, and it's been around since 2006. Um, but the thing is, um, with Brandon Jacobs, 
my two best friends that um, one's my photographer, one's my social media guy that you know, helps me if I can't keep up on my Instagram and my Facebook, he does all that stuff. And um, they came to me and wanted to do something as far as like a team dead serious thing, more like an urban clothing line, like casual stuff um, that kids will wear out, right? Because I mean, kids wear tap out and stuff like that, but let's be real. You see a guy at a bar with a tap out shirt, you know, obviously he's going to get judged or oh, this guy's wearing tap out. Yeah. You know? And, and it's the same with my clothing line. Like yep, I, I know that. we sell some nice fight gear, right? But the second it says fight gear on it, like you know, automatically people are like judging you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, not that it should matter, but still. So we we came up with another uh side of that, that series called Team Dead Series, and now that's like our casual urban line, that is just plain V-necks with a little dog's head or um, nice quotes on shirts with some funky uh, lettering. But with, when it comes to the Team Dead Series, you want to branch off into all kinds of sports, um, music, um, sports athletes like Brandon Jacobs, um, BMXing, you know, clubs, parties, like that whole genre of, you know, the youth. So um, with, with Brandon Jacobs, um, my buddy is a huge football, like sports fanatic. Like he knows everything about all the sports guys. He's always following them on Instagram. And uh, we knew Brandon Jacobs was hot. Um, coming back to the Giants and stuff like that. So we hit him up on Instagram, and we had some good feedback, emails back and forth. We sent him some stuff, and all we did, we, we sent him some free uh, care package. And um, mm -hmm. he blasted us on Instagram and Twitter, and he loved his stuff. Um, he actually has, like, a cousin, I think, Kendall Holt, who's a professional boxer. He used to be a world champ. And uh, okay. he up recently about wanting to wear our stuff. So it was definitely uh, – Definitely crazy waking up to that Instagram picture, you know, the uh, Giants, you know, running back, or, or, uh, rocking. Yeah, it. seriously. You know? It's definitely uh, definitely crazy. Definitely one for the books there. For sure. Do you have any other um, athletes that you plan on working on, that you're trying to work on now, or is there anyone else in the books that you have that you can mention? Um, nothing, um, no, nothing recently. We have some stuff lined up. We're just waiting. Um, you know, we're big on, you know, um, not talking too much, just just letting it yeah. go, you know, because uh, I could tell you a million things, and if nothing happens, then, you know, how does that look? So exactly. right now, um, we sent about, I believe, six care packages to L.A. to um, this um, sports manager who deals with uh, guys as far as, like, Mark Sanchez, some guys from the Bears, some guys from the Dolphins, yeah. um, stuff like that. So he's going to go out and branch stuff out and um, see where it goes from there. We're going to do this or not? Okay, okay. He's doing this for the... You know what, bro? You know what? This is cool. Um... <laughs> you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. No problem. So, um... um I definitely so saw that, that the clothing line is growing. Yeah. So, um, tell me about the nightlife uh, events that you do as well. I know you've been doing that for quite a while. Actually, I think you were doing that back when you and I first met a couple years back, too, so... How, um, how did you get into that, and just talk about that one. Um, well, like, the nightlife, uh, a buddy of mine uh, and I started DJing when we were 17, and um, didn't know where it was going to go. We just wanted, you know, something different. Nobody was really DJing then, you know, and um, we started doing parties, random, you know, uh, like little backyard, or little house parties. We didn't even know what we were doing. We just, you know, trying to be the center of attention, I guess, back then, and... Um, we actually started getting better at it and learn the learn the um, the roots of it and uh, everything kicked off. I mean, we've been around since '07, I think '06, DJing, and the company grows each and every year. And um, there, I mean, I haven't not worked a weekend in probably two or three years, you know. So um, we do everything from bar mitzvahs to bar mitzvahs to weddings to sweet sixteens to quinces to clubs we take over clubs at night as far as we you know supply the bartenders the bottle girls the dancers the djs um we have promoters and percussionists and singers so we we supply everything now okay and what's the biggest venue you've done so far biggest venue we've done is probably the pool in atlantic city oh okay okay yeah that, we, is, that is definitely a pretty big spot I, i've been there a couple of times so i'm pretty familiar with it yeah, we've been out in Atlantic City at the pool. We've been to Casbah. We've been to uh, Foundation Room in Atlantic City. Um, where else have we been? We just signed a contract with uh, Teak in Hoboken. Teak on the Hudson, who's pretty big. 
Um, we got seven, eight lounge coming up. Um, we got a bunch of big venues, you know, slowly but surely. We don't, um, we don't like to get too over our heads with stuff. We like to, you know, take one at a time and, you know, make it work and then go to the next one. So. Mm-hmm. And what are you, what are you playing with that? Like I know now, like the nightlife industry is, is huge. It's probably like the only thing that really keeps going no matter what else is going on. So what are some of your plans in, in that field? Uh, you know, some of my plans are just, you know, just to uh, make sure everybody's having a good time and, and to know that, like, anytime Dead Sears is throwing a, a big event somewhere, to, that they need, they don't, they can't miss it, right? And um, just to, to make our events a lot more different than other, you know, uh, companies out there. Anybody can throw a night. It's how different you can throw it. So now we um, we recently yeah. just signed uh, Alexa Ayes, uh, a rising singer, um, to the Dead Sears family. So we have her performing at our clubs. Um, we have, you know, uh, Detail, who's a crazy percussionist on the congas and the bongos, and he plays the house music, so, which is pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're, we're slowly building up our, uh, our, our staff with uh, great, great talent, so. Okay, so who are some acts that you listen to yourself? Some acts that I listen to? Yeah. Um, I'm very old school, man. I, I'm big into, you know, Wu-Tang and... Um, you know, old tribe. You know, uh, Karis One. I, I, I'm all about the old school, man. I listen to a lot of old school hip hop, a lot of old school R and B. Um, but I do, I do like Drake. I like Future. I like some of the new stuff. But I, I'm definitely an old school cat. Okay, okay, that's good stuff. So, what else do you have coming up in your fight career next? I know you just fought was is last month, right? Yeah. Okay, and um, so what do you have like next? What are some of your plans going forward? John? Um, right oh, now. I'm 13. Well, so what's next? Right now, I'm just back in the gym. Um, the the, the uh, everybody's out in Vegas right now, coaching on the Ultimate Fighter. So like the school, yeah. back and forth, guys coming in, guys coming out. Um, so they should be coming back in like a week or two. So training will start getting heavy again. Um, but I believe I'm fighting January 25th at Rand Combat again. Okay, and how many times have you fought for them? Like uh, uh, all seven of my fights have been for them. All seven? Okay. Do you foresee like a title shot coming your way anytime soon? Uh, that's what people keep asking. I mean, if they give it to me, I, I mean, I'll take it. Um, but I'm really not crazy about it because, uh, I, I mean, if I need to win the title in order to get to UFC, then I, I, I guess I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I'm going to do it. But mm-hmm. I, I really don't um, foresee the need for a title shot because I really want to go to the UFC. You know, I don't want to be locked down anywhere. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if I need to take a title shot and win the title in order to get to UFC, I'll do it. But if I don't, then it's pointless. You know what I mean? Because... You win the title, then you get to yeah. UFC, and it was, it was, you know, not. I guess it's good for a resume, but I mean, they look at records, they don't look at titles. That's true. That's true. Have you started having those conversations at all, or is it just like you're not even thinking about it yet? I mean, uh, I, I'm not one to uh, plan my future. You know, I, I stopped, mm-hmm. you know, making goals for myself a while ago. As far as you know, September 1st, I'm going to be in the UFC, or you know, this date, I'm going to be doing this. Like, no, I, I mean, UFC is the goal. And um, mm-hmm. 24, I'm young, and uh, I'm hungry, and um, it, it's gonna come wh- whether or not UFC likes it or not. I'm coming, so I'm just letting it play out. <laughs> That's what's up like that. You know? Okay, okay, good stuff. Well, Frankie, I definitely appreciate you coming through today. I definitely appreciate you talking to me. Um, I'm going to definitely share this video out for the public to see, and any information you have about your expo coming up as well, let, let me know about that, and I'll make sure I do the best to get information out. Um, it's a great event. I know it, uh, it's very it's needed up in that area too to kind of help spread some more information about the sports that's going on. So I definitely, I know the community appreciates you doing that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I'm looking forward to it. It's the first one in a, in a long time that they, you know, that there's a lot of good hands in it. Um, we actually um, just um, working in with Grappler's Quest, uh, possibly just running their tournament at our thing, which would be huge. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate your time, man. You're always supporting us up here, and uh, definitely miss rolling around with you on uh, Mondays and Wednesday mornings. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely, th- thank you so much. You know, for all support, always, man. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. And everybody, uh, anybody um, wants to know more about the expo, you can just um, check out www.necombatsportsexpo.com. That's N as in North. E as in East, Combat Sports Expo dot com, um, and that's going to be the three day event, December thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth. 
And uh, if you want to check me out and any updates on stuff with me, it's uh, Team Frankie Perez on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Okay, good stuff. Well, I appreciate your time again, man. And I would say best of luck to you, but I know you don't need it. You're going to be doing great things. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I greatly appreciate it. No problem. Have a great day. I right, man. You too.